want to learn how to program in Java? Yeah, we can do that. Just give me a minute to finish up the lawn, okay? Cutting that grass on a weekly basis is quite a chore, so I think I'm going to write a program to see how many passes it takes me to do it. First thing I need to do is maybe plan this thing out a bit. Get a piece of paper. All right, here's my backyard. Approximately 50 feet wide, 30 feet deep. Give or take for the trees. I want to know how many square feet that is, and then given the swath of my lawnmower, how many passes it's going to take to cut that grass. Let's code it. When you first start NetBeans and you've not already worked on a project before, you're going to come into an empty screen like this in the IDE. And what you want to do is go up and click on File, and new project and then begin the process of assigning some identification to this process. So we're going to select Java and Java application, click next and it's going to give it a default name. For our purposes we're going to call this mowing man so type in the name and pay attention to where it's going to store the project so if you need to go back later and check this out and then simply click on finish. Now it'll go about the business of setting up the necessary documents for the project. And here we are, this is how it begins. Now what I'm gonna to do to clarify things for you is clean out some of the documentation. And you can set up the template yourself when you get a little more experienced uh, so that that stuff doesn't appear. So what we have here are the basic components of a Java application. For now, we're going to not worry about the package statement. That's basically just a way of organizing a bunch of classes. And pay attention to the class that's been created. Everything in Java is in the context of a class. And within class, we have a number of methods and attributes that are going to perform the action that our, pro that our program is designed to do. Every Java application has to have a method called main. And so we see that the template has built main for us right here. Now, a couple of things we wanna note before we start typing in any code. Uh, our class is labeled as public. Now public is what's known as an access modifier. That is, that declares to the rest of the classes uh, who can see the data and who can utilize the methods within that class. In this case, because it is named as a public class, um, the data uh, the, the data and the methods within that class uh, are visible to other classes. Uh, the corollary to public is a private class. Now that same access modifier is here as a part of the main definition. You see a number of things here, we'll walk through them real quick. Uh, public is our access modifier, so this is a public method, so it's visible all over. Um, static right now, we won't worry too much about that, but static basically says that this is accessible uh, before an object is created. And we haven't quite gotten to the point of instantiation yet. So uh, just uh, accept that for now. So public, static, and void uh, tells what the return value is of this function. In this case, when it is void, that means that nothing is returned uh, at the end of executing main. So I'm gonna clear out this last little comment right here. A comment is a little bit of text that is included within your uh, program uh, to kind of tell the user, the editor, yourself, 
um, what's going on within the program, what values mean, what, uh, what your logic is at different points. It's ignored by the compiler. The compiler sees uh, the, the marking for a, uh, a comment and it just ignores it and moves past looking for executable code. So one more thing here. I like my brackets to align, so I put them this way. Okay. Now, the first thing that we want to have happen here is we're going to place some code inside the body of the function. So let's add a, a, I don't know, a simple instruction to simply print out the name of the program. And uh, then we'll see what happens. Now, I have purposely made a mistake so you can see right away what the editor is going to do for you. If you'll notice right here, we have a little uh, uh, mark that says there is an error in this line. Camp your mouse over that mark and it indicates that uh, I've made an, an error in the package that I'm trying to call. And you see that system is underlined. The reason for that is that Java is case sensitive and the actual name of this library is uppercase system. As soon as I correct that error, you see that uh, the error mark goes away and uh, it recognizes the library and then the methods within that library. All right, so we have a program that has given an instruction to print out onto the screen uh, the string mowing man. If I want to execute that, Simply go up here to the green arrow, click on it. Now watch your bottom window, your output window. Uh, the compiler is running and you can see that it followed the instruction. It printed mowing man out to the screen and gave me the notice that the build was successful. So uh, my program up to this point is 100% complete. It doesn't do a lot, uh, but uh, we're on our way. So let's move on to the next step of our design. All right, putting the name of the program on the screen is a miracle all in itself, but it doesn't do much as far as our plan to develop a program which tells me how many passes it's going to take to cut my grass. So I began to add some additional code to our program. I've added a couple of variables up at the top here, length and width, and we'll talk about variables more in the future. These are basically just data elements that are holding a value for me right now, and then they can be modified during the execution of the program. I've added an additional line here that uh, is going to show the length and width, the dimensions of my, uh, of my grass. And I'm going to finish typing this last little line here. The plus sign in this context is called the concatenation operator. And what that, is, what that means is that uh, the output statement, the print line, is going to construct a single output line by concatenating all of the various elements that I type in here uh, onto the screen all at once. Now you'll notice uh, this red line running down the uh, about the middle of the editor screen here. That indicates that you've hit 80 columns. Now, if you're never going to print this out, it's no big deal, but uh, it shows us an interesting um, feature of modern languages and that is they ignore white space. White space is your friend so you can put as much white space into your program as necessary to make it understandable. So when I cut this off and simply move this uh, concat operator down to here uh, the compiler doesn't have an issue with all the space between there. It simply reads until it finds uh, the uh, delimiter for the entire statement which is the semicolon here. All right, so we have added uh, the two size variables, 30 by 50 feet, uh, and we're going to display those and then simply compute in this expression right here, the length times width inside the parentheses, uh, the square footage of my massive lawn. 
and we see that it comes up to 1500 square feet down here in the results. Now you'll notice here that we lack a space between there and that's because I failed to put a space here. So the nice thing about an integrated development environment is that you can make your change and compile it and execute it right away and see the results of your change. So it goes back in, it corrects it, and it fixes my 1500 square feet issue. Okay, I'm just finishing up adding the last little bit of code here to our little masterpiece. And a couple of new things that I've added that you'll be interested in. All right, I've added some additional variables here to I've added some additional variables here to contain some of the parts of the computation that we need to make. So the swath of my trusty Husqvarna uh, is two feet wide. Now I want to document that so that uh, somebody who uses this program later wants to edit it. Uh, they, they get a nice giant riding mower. They can come in here and change this. So I'm going to show that um, in a comment here that I have a 24 inch blade that, um, or that's the width of the cut on my blade here. Uh, the swath is going to, not the swatch, that's a watch, swath uh, is either going to be times uh, the length or the width. so that uh, you can figure out you know how many of those you're going to need and then obviously the total passes will be the number of those swaths that are necessary to cut the entire uh, lawn and so we will compute that we do that down here in this series of expressions here so this first assignment says take swath times the width, I'll use the east-west width of the grass, and uh, multiply that, and then assign the equal sign here, assign that into the variable cut pass. So the result of this computation will be assigned into there. Likewise, the computation here, length times width, and then take that subtotal and divide it by cut pass, is going to give me the total passes. And then I'll simply take that number that I store in total passes and output that. So I'm guessing about 400 passes to mow my lawn, but let's see, or 400 or 15, whichever comes first. I know this is kind of a silly program because you could have figured this all out in the dirt in the backyard, but uh, it gives you get a little good experience. If you take the code as it sits right here now, type it in, um, you'll have a working program and you can experiment with it a little bit. Uh, in the next series of videos, uh, we will learn more about variables, learn about constants. We'll also learn how to input values on the fly so that if uh, uh, I knock down the fence and take a little bit of my neighbor's yard, I can on the fly change the length or width. Good luck with your program and I'll talk to you again.